Unfortunately, folks, the RV manufacturing industry is quite a mess. Watch to the end of the video for my tips on how you can protect yourself. Hi, I'm Jacob, owner of Rigger RV Repair. I'm a certified RV technician, and I found that about a quarter of the repairs I end up doing are preventable. Be sure to subscribe to my channel so you can get more tips on how to keep your RV out of the shop. And also, if you like videos that you find helpful, that'll help me know what type of content to create more of. So, what are three dirty secrets of the RV manufacturing industry that they don't want you to know? First dirty secret, the RV manufacturing industry is not regulated the way that the automobile manufacturing is. When it comes to cars, the drivetrain, all the safety features are regulated. There are certain standards for safety features. But with RVs, everything that's not a part of the motor vehicle, almost anything goes with the manufacturing. That includes all the slide rooms and the RV appliances. And if those break or just don't work as intended, like government doesn't have any oversight there. And the RV manufacturers don't have any real incentive to make things better or more reliable. So for example, one of my clients hired me to come repair the suspension on his triple axle toy hauler that he had bought for hauling his motorcycles. And what I found was that the suspension they put on at the factory was barely adequate to hold up the RV. It would not actually hold any cargo weight, which means when he put his motorcycles in, it was breaking the suspension on his RV. Their solution was not to send him new axles or suspension components, but rather to send a new VIN sticker changing the weight rating, essentially making it a oversized RV box, incapable of hauling toys. That's cutting corners, big time, and not owning up to their problem of a poorly designed RV. The second dirty secret of the RV industry is there's a severe lack of quality control on the assembly line. I have dealt with so many issues that never should have made it off the factory floor. But what's happening is RV manufacturers are just shipping things out and relying on the dealerships to repair big issues under warranty. But the problem with the dealerships is they don't have enough technicians to handle the workload. So it turns into this vicious cycle that results in consumers buying new RVs that have so many issues, their RV spends six months or more in the shop waiting for repairs some of my clients they get their rv back from having it repaired and it's still pouring water out the bottom of their new rv one of my clients took his rv out on a three-week vacation brand new rv and one of the air conditioners wouldn't work and i found it was because there was a staple that had gone through the thermostat wire in the wall and it had never worked even from the factory but not only did the factory send out this RV with a not working air conditioner, but the dealership sold an RV with a not working air conditioner. And then when it was taken back for warranty work and then given back to the customer, it still had a not working air conditioner. These are all symptoms of this quality control problem that RV manufacturers just don't really want to fix. The third dirty secret of the RV industry. The RV industry doesn't really make money off of selling RVs. They make money off of financing them. One of my clients was actually a business analyst who worked for a major RV dealership. And he said that their big money was not in sales of new units, but in financing new units. That's kind of why there's no incentive to create and sell a really, really well-built product. They're not really in the RV product market their businesses and banking. Now folks, I love RVs. I love RVing. My goal here is not to try and dissuade you from buying an RV, but rather to help you get the most out of your camper and your camping experience. So here's what I recommend. When you buy a new RV, take it camping immediately and figure out all the issues so that you can take advantage of the one year manufacturer warranty to have those problems fixed for free rather than it falling on your bank account. When you buy a new camper, just set your expectations differently. You're probably not gonna take this out and enjoy it a lot the first year you own it. Expect it to be in the shop for maybe six months while those issues get fixed, hopefully. And then maybe back in the shop again if they don't get fixed. Once you have all the kinks worked out of the camper, then you can take it on trips and enjoy it more. I know it's frustrating to have to spend money on an older camper to have it repaired, but 
I don't want you to be under the delusion that buying a new camper is going to solve all these maintenance issues. The reality is I work on old campers just as much as new ones. Let's go get my Don't Get Stranded checklist, which covers four of the most common scenarios where I have to go and help a stuck RV that's immovable. I really encourage you to download the checklist because the items on it are some of the scariest breakdowns, sometimes leaving you stranded on the side of the interstate or with a camper that's unmovable when you've got a spot that has to be taken by another RVer. In situations like that, you end up calling a mobile service and paying a lot of money to have your RV repaired in an emergency. You can avoid those things. Go get my Don't Get Stranded checklist. You can download that checklist at my website or by clicking the link on this video. Be sure to do everything on it. I'm gonna have an upcoming video where I answer RV maintenance questions. So if you have a question for me, be sure and leave a comment with your questions so I can answer it in that upcoming video. Thanks for watching. I hope you find this video is helpful. Happy camping.